Now I have been a fan of the Steam Controller for a few years now. I only got into it like after the the final sale a few years ago when they were clearing out all their stock, but very, very quickly fell in love with the idea of trackpads on a controller. And that was always the big, you know, thing for me. These trackpads are paradigm shifting. If you haven't been initiated into Steam controllerism, I really suggest giving it a try. You know, I this is the only controller I play with. I can't go back to, you know, dual joysticks for first-person shooters, at least. It's just that significant. So when the Steam Deck was announced, I was excited to see Valve's, like, second attempt at a proper controller. You know, are they gonna... What, what are they gonna do? And we got some images of it, and I was a little worried at first, because, you know, while the trackpads are present, and Valve certainly hadn't given up on the idea of trackpads for games, they're kind of, like, down to the side... You know, they're not really the center of attention. They're not a first-class citizen anymore. And they're smaller, they're square now. Like, yeah, I was a little tentative about it, to say the least. But having had the Steam Deck now for about a month, I can safely say that the trackpads are really good. Like, really good. And if you love the Steam Controller, I think you are going to love the Steam Deck too. And I'm really hopeful for the future of Steam input, Steam's Valve's own uh, proprietary controller hardware. But first of all, the trackpads are, they are smaller, right? And that really just doesn't matter that much to me. You know, they're, they're, the tech inside of them is upgraded. I, they're not more sensitive, maybe is the wrong word, but they're more accurate. Like, I, I don't feel like I have to move my thumb as much to, you know, comfortably and confidently get the same kind of input as I would on Steam Controller. You know, here I, I'm moving my thumb a lot more, and I if I upped the sensitivity on this, it would just not feel like I have full control. Whereas on here, like, the smaller trackpads, not a big deal, because look at how little I'm moving my thumb, and, and I have got full control over my input. And that in tandem with the gyro, of course. The gyro has something like twice the polling rate as on the Steam controller, so a lot more accurate. It is just totally, totally good. And another really cool thing about the trackpads is that they are no longer, like, proper buttons. And that might have been, like, the single worst thing about the Steam controller, is that the, uh, you know, the, the, the trackpad click was always really stiff. So like you really had to give it a lot of pressure in order to activate a click. So if you had, you know, something like a D-pad on the left trackpad and you actually were trying to, to click it down, you know, it was just not a not a very good time for something like a platformer. Obviously you could just have the, the tactic press like I have here in Halo, but it, it just wasn't wasn't very good. But on the Steam Deck, they're no longer buttons. They're they're like uh, Apple trackpads, like on a MacBook, if you've used a recent MacBook, where the click is something of an illusion. Um, you know, you, you click it, they're pressure sensitive. You click it in past a certain point, and it, it does a little haptic press that kind of tricks your brain into feeling a click that isn't technically present, but that is like a really big game changer. And I'm excited to see what people uh, kind of do with that. Because these are really like, you know, they're full analog inputs now. You know, having, like I, I was messing with the round on these on Rocket League, you know, putting the right trigger, I can map it to the pressure on the trackpad and the left trigger too. And, and it was surprising how well it worked, you know. So in Halo, for instance, um, I've got... Just kind of experimenting with this, I've got two clicks on the right trackpad. The first click is like interact, pick up, and the second click is melee. And I've got those on a soft press, hit fire aggressive, and uh, the soft press threshold is like all the way to the left, so it's just a very light click. I actually wish that the soft press 
could go a little bit more to the left, like if we had negative values we could put in here. I would like it to be just a little bit softer, but it's fine. And then the, the Melee, also on a soft press, but a much harder press. press. Uh, hip fire aggressive, so I don't, you know, fire both of the inputs if I go all the way down. And this is actually really cool, because I can, you know, kind of walk around here, I can pick up a weapon with just the normal press, but I can also activate melee like that. And that feels really good, you know, like you're, you're punching your controller, and that's punching the guy in front of you on screen. That is a... I really, really like that. Uh, another really cool thing about the trackpads on the Steam controller is that you had mode shifts. So, you know, like if I wanted to change a weapon in Halo, I would map Y to like the top click of the trackpad, you know. The kind of common thing, you map all four of the face buttons to like all four sides of the trackpad, and then you'd have an extra sort of click in the middle um, to spare. So you could fire your weapon and then reload by pressing where X would be, switch your weapon by pressing where Y would be. Mode shifts are present in the SteamOS configurator now as of like a week or two ago, but I'm not sure if they're broken or if I'm just not using them right, because I haven't gotten them to work yet. Um, if they are broken, you know, they are at least nominally supported and Valve is clearly interested in having them in the configurator. Valve knows the value of mode shifts, and they added them, so either they'll fix them or I'll just learn how to use them properly. But <clears throat> I am very, very happy with the trackpads. Uh, another thing about them, like with the uh, the soft press, you know, you can make the soft press very, very soft. Like I said, I wish I could make it a little bit softer, but it is now possible to do something like click and drag in a game, like in a point and click game, that was that was something that just wasn't really possible on the Steam controller, you know. You'd have to press in so hard that, you know, the friction on your thumb would just make it unpleasant to do something like that. Here, you know, I can click and I can drag my thumb across while keeping it clicked. And that that I think is is a big deal for some games. Uh, another thing, like speaking to the accuracy of the trackpads, like I would always in menus or point and click games, whenever I had a mouse cursor on screen, I would always have, you know, obviously the mouse mapped to the right trackpad, but I'd also have it mapped to the gyro. And I find myself turning off the gyro in menus with the Steam Deck. Like I just, I just feel that accurate with the trackpad by itself that even adding in the gyro kind of might throw me off if I'm moving around just a little bit, so I don't know, that's just something something I've noticed. Like, the trackpads are much more accurate now. Um, now the, the triggers are kind of a point of contention, right? They're, they no longer have the, the dual stage triggers, like on the Steam controller, so whereas before you could, like, press it once, and then at the very end, press it again, and there was a second click. They are just a single click now. They're just a just a single, the soft pull. We no longer have the second click at the bottom, and that is not a huge deal. It is a bummer. I mean, it kind of makes me scratch my head. Like, why, why go back on a feature? It's just kind of strange, but it's fine. Um, the triggers themselves, though do feel much better. There, There is a bit more travel with the trigger. Um, so if I can show you, it might look like it's about the same, but it feels much, much deeper, um, which is pretty great. The bumpers also are much improved. Like, bumpers were always sort of the, the first thing to go on a Steam controller. I've actually modded mine right here, so they're not loud and fragile like they are stock. I can pull out this one, and you know, you can really hear just how how clicky that was, and and they they, they had a tendency of breaking. I put like some uh, electrical tape around 
something in here and it, it kind of softened the click and made it hopefully more durable, but that is just another thing to note. Also just kind of the general feel of everything. I'm surprised at how, how not cheap, but kind of toy-like the Steam Deck feels. Like I really feel like I could drop this thing and it would survive. That's compared to the Steam Controller, which, you know, doesn't have much weight to it, doesn't feel like a toy like the Steam Deck does, but is just very, very cheap feeling. Very light, kind of, I don't know, and the quality of the plastic, it kind of gets oil on it, but the Steam Deck is a far cry from that. It really feels like a good, strong, durable device, kind of keeps itself clean. It's, it is really nice. Now the problem with the triggers, you know, there's no there's no second click anymore, but there are two more buttons on the very back. Whereas on the Steam controller, they're just kind of there are these paddles and they're really good. It was like the only controller at the time really that that had buttons on the back except for maybe I don't know when the Xbox Elite controller came out, but nobody had that. Nobody had the Steam controller either, I guess, but Xbox Elite controller had a whole bunch of issues and whatever, but the buttons on the back of the Steam Deck are much improved. And this is really the only case where it's like a very clear objective upgrade between the two. You know, the trackpads are better, but they're also kind of different. You know, the triggers are whatever. You give and take, but the, the buttons are really the the clearest upgrade between the two. Uh, of course, we've got two of them, two more of them. And I think the like the button itself underneath the housing is like right around here, you know, under the plastic tab. But the button is pretty large, you know, there's kind of a lot of surface area. And I am surprised at how easy it is to press the button. Like you can press it, you know, kind of here where you're pulling into the side, or you can kind of push on the back of the device. And it is, it's the exact same click, no matter where you're pressing. So very high quality, very easy to use. Um, very, very happy with the back buttons. Now another big thing isn't exactly Steam Controller related, but the Steam OS Steam Controller Configurator is very different. You know, if you're used to using big picture mode, this is a just night and day difference between a, how you would modify the controllers, the controls on a on a desktop computer than on this. And this is another case where it's like, I don't know if it's a clear upgrade or not, it's just different. It takes a little bit of getting used to. I'm guessing the reason that they, they've kind of done away with the picture of the controller and kind of mapped out the inputs where they were physically located on the controller is to just make things easier on themselves. Valve, you know, you don't have to create a custom controller menu for each new controller you want to support or make or whatever. It's all just kind of standardized, which it's fine. Again, I don't know if it's better or worse, but it's different. It takes a little bit of getting used to. Um, another one really, one thing I really do like to see, you know, on these soft presses, for instance, you get the number, the actual number, the value that you're, you're setting it to uh, in the configurator. And that is, that is just nice to have. Just like to see that. Um, one odd thing that I've noticed though, and I don't know if Valve plans on adding this or, or not, I haven't really heard anything about it, but there's no way to change like the desktop or default configuration. Um, so like on Steam Controller, you know, I had my, uh, my default like in menu, in the Steam menu, configuration, I had, you know, like a D-pad mapped to just the the press on the track pads. And that, as far as I know, you can't do that anymore. You know, it's just back to manually clicking it. That's the default on here and default on here too. And you can't, as far as I know, you can't edit that. Same thing with like the desktop configuration. If you're in the Linux desktop and you want to you want to use, you know, you want to customize all your controls, you want to remap the face buttons to be whatever you want. As far as I know, there's there's no way to do that yet. And I don't know if they're going to support that or not. Um, one great thing, though, 
is that you can uh, use uh, Steam Controller configs on the Steam Deck. That, you know, is kind of an obvious feature, but one that I am glad that they actually supported. So here, you know, this is the Steam Deck that I'm modifying. This would be the Steam Controller. I have the Steam Deck that I'm modifying, and I can go over to Community Layouts, and, you know, these are just a bunch of Steam Controller configs. You know, there's Ramble Tans config, it's configs for this game. Just a whole bunch of Steam Controller configs. There's a couple Steam Deck ones, so, you know, that is nice that they thought about that. You know, you can, if you are a big Steam Controller user and you already have a bunch of configurations for games that you've made, you don't have to remake them for the Steam Deck, so that's good. Uh, one, one other thing about the controller, you know, when I first got this controller, it, I tried, it very quickly dawned on me that like the way I should use this controller is with two fingers up here. And that was different from how I used most controllers. You know, I would just have the one finger on the trigger, but two fingers on the trigger is kind of the way that, that I want to hold this controller. That kind of, it does a few things. It helps my uh, thumbs to float above the track pads instead of, uh, you know, instead of resting like kind of on it, you know, accidentally sending inputs, you're not trying to, to send. But also like with a one finger grip, it's it's a little bit harder to reach the face buttons and the D-pad and all that. So two fingers, easier to do all this, floating above the inputs. And I was attempt I was tempted to try that grip on the Steam con or the the Steam Deck when I first got it. And that is just not really viable for me. Um you know, obviously, it looks attractive because it kind of moves your thumbs down a little bit and gets you. It gets them right above the track pads, and they're they're kind of floating above the track pads too. But it, it's just not not very comfortable. It makes it really hard actually to press the all of the buttons on the back. You know, really confidently, really comfortably. But yeah, using a one finger grip, it's the track pads are perfectly usable. I mean takes just a little bit of getting used to, but once you do get used to it, it's, it is not a big deal. Um, and I really feel like if I'm using the two finger grip, it is, I'm not really holding the controller. Like it's just kind of resting in my hand. You know, my palms aren't really wrapped around the side, but one finger grip, it's like, you know, I've got control of this device. It's not, it's not falling out. Um, and then one one last thing about like the track pads, I, I have noticed that, you know, if I map movement to the left track pad, that is a little bit more difficult than having movement on the track pad on the Steam controller. And I that probably is down to not having this little indent right in there, so you're not, you know, you're never exactly sure where your thumb is in relation to the controller. That again is probably just a matter of getting used to it a little bit, but, you know, I do have to think about it a little bit more, but even then, I do have the joystick to fall back on. I can do a mixed grip like this, and it's it's perfectly fine. Joysticks are, are fine for movement. Joysticks are fine even for the camera in, in some games. Not every game, but, you know, some games like that, I do find myself going back and forth because the joysticks on this are actually a lot more usable. Uh, even in first-person games like that, because of the capacitive sensor. And that that is one thing that is kind of a, a game-changer. You know, mapping the gyro to when you're pressing, or when you're uh, touching the right joystick. So you do get much more accurate uh, aiming than you would on, on a, a regular sort of dual joystick controller. And that's actually something I'm really interested in seeing other people or myself like dive into because um, in the controller configurator of course the uh, the haptic or the uh, what do you call it capacitive touch of the joysticks are their own buttons essentially and so you could uh, you could add a command to touching the uh, the joystick but you know on top of that you could have it be a regular press, you could add an input that is a double press or a long press, start release, you know, you've got all the 
all the options present here. So it is a it is a very very interesting controller. There's a lot of depth to it that you know I feel like I've only begun scratching the surface, and I'm sure Valve will push a lot more updates to improve controllers and add features even. But I I am very very in love with the Steam Deck. I think if you love the Steam controller, you are going to be perfectly happy with the Steam Deck. And I I think there is some hope on the horizon for Steam controller fans, even if you don't, you know, necessarily want to buy a big $400 handheld device. Uh, you know, just, just seeing Valve's work with, like, SteamOS and how hard they're pushing this hardware, trying to get away from Microsoft, away from Windows, like, it is the writing is on the wall. It's just inevitable that they're going to do, you know, Steam Machine 2, that they're going to have a crack at a living room console again. And and when that does come, you know, maybe that'll be a few years out. Nothing with Valve happens quickly, but when that does come, I'm pretty confident that we'll get a Steam controller too. And even if it's just like, you know, a Steam Deck without a screen, you know, the controls kind of squished in, maybe make the grips a little bit more comfortable kind of use if your hands are in that angle, even if it's just like a one-to-one -one sort of shrunken Steam Deck. If that's Steam Controller too, like I'm going to be pretty happy with it, all things considered.